Hello, I am Ahmad, and in this video, we are going to model the T stop that we had in the previous video for numerical example with ANSYS software. The version of this ANSYS is uh, 2023 R1, and I have to thank EDR Medeso for providing the license for this tutorial. In this uh, video, I'm going to use the solid model to model the T stop and also the bolts are going to be modeled with the uh, beam element in mechanical uh, window. Uh, let's do it and see how it works. Okay, when you open ANSYS Workbench, you see the toolbox in the left and here you have different options, which a static structural analyzes using mechanical APDL solver would be the proper one for us. Here you can change, for example, the name to solid mode number one to know what you are going to do. The first option is about the engineering data that you can uh, define the materials that you are going to use. Double click on that here on by default, we have a structural steel. As far as we are going to use the nonlinear analyzes, it is better we change it to uh, a structural mm, nonlinear material. For this, you can just click on engineering data source and then find out the proper general nonlinear material. And in the next table, we can see different materials. Here, I'm going to use a structure still nonlinear, and I just add two. Then you can come back to the first page. I prefer not to use a structural still by default that I know. Uh, it's not in use. The first one is going to be S235 and the second one I go with the bolt class. In each one you need to define the yield strength and the tangent modulus. As far as usually we assume that the material of steel in the nonlinear analyzes is elastic perfectly plastic. So we need to use the tangent modulus as a uh, small value as possible. For this, we come here and change the, the unit to megapascal and 235 for the value. And for this, it is typical to use one megapascal for tangent modulus. We can go to M88. We know that the ultimate limit is 800 and the yield limit is 80% of that. So this value will be 640 and the same applies for the tangent modulus. When you define these two materials, then you can just close engineering data. You have the material. Next, we need geometry to be sketched. You can use uh, import from other software. Also here you can use different options for modeling. Space claim these days is very handy and user friend that you can use. And okay, it was a HEA 200, so I just need to open. And then here you can change the option, the format to DWG DXF. And here I have HEA 240 in CAD version. Notice that here. Uh, when you open for the first time, you have uh, inches and also you can select option to change the, the units to the units that you prefer and you have in your CAD draw. Uh, to check if the import is correct, you can select it and see that the length is 240 millimeter for the flange, which, which seems to be fine. This is half of the cross section as I didn't need the rest. So then, you just need to select and then feel it. So you have it. If you want to change the uh, color, you can come here and change the color to what you would prefer. Typically, I keep the uh, cross section in a reasonable coordinate that at least I'm familiar with the numbers that what I'm going to have in my model. So here, uh, when you want to use the solid model, you just need to drag this or pull it. We have the pull option here. And as far as I want to keep this uh, plane in the center, I go with the pull both sides option here in options of pools. 
and then the total length can be given it was 180 millimeter if you remember the next is putting the holes for bolts on the top or bottom of this uh, t-stop for that you can come here and select circle then select the proper plane so here i have to go 50 millimeter from the edge just shift and then 50 millimeter the diameter it was the first mode it was m20 so the hole for m20 will be 22 millimeter i will go from the other end as well 50 millimeter and then 22 millimeter also i want to have the washer which in the head side will be 35 millimeter for m20 the same for the other side as well and then you can end the sketch now we have these two faces and then you can pull them now we have the holes the next phase is to model the supporting plate uh, in your code when you want to analyze the joint for rigidity you calculate every single connection as one entity it means that it is assumed that the flange of the column is completely the weakest element first then we assume that the plate which is connecting to this column is the weakest element and then we assume that the web of the column is the weakest element so in this case it is better if we assume that in in our example the supporting plate is quite strong and uh, it cannot deform as far as we are just studying this t-stop equivalent t-stop representing the one row of the bolts connected to the column for that uh, i can just copy and paste this as a surface then you can uh, just hide the solid part select these two and then press fill then you have this plate that you can extrude with the pull option the next might be as far as this is quite the same size as uh, t-stop here it is better if we assume that it's bigger and thicker indeed so for this case i can pull these lines let's say 100 millimeter in each side that i have a quite a sturdy supporting plate that the deformation is not applied to this element and the thickness of uh, hea 240 is 12 millimeters so here i will go with 25 millimeter uh, to have quite a strong plate now if we look at these two so we have the t-stop connected to the plate here you can just double click or one click and then write the name that you please supporting plate the only remaining thing is that when we have bolts on this t-stop so it should go through the supporting plate it is important to have the same holes in the other uh, part here supporting plate as well so i can select these two and then in the design you can go through project and here you can see that it shows where it's going to have those then you can just easily turn off t-stop and these two with the selection of pool then we have these two holes for uh, the bolts also in the knot size of the bolt we have washers which are typically for m20 38 millimeters so here i need to have again circles you just need to select 
and then go to the center 38 the other case as well 38 millimeter and now you can just end the sketch when you end the sketch you can see that you have also a new surface made because you had to uh, circle you can just delete it and check that you have this 38 millimeter uh, diameter representing the washer home view TSD up and that's all now we have these two if you are interested in the bolt analyzers and understanding the bolt or analyzing the bolt then you need to model bolt here but uh, we have options in APDL to model the bolt we have whatever we need so now we can close this part and we can go to model when the model is updated you can see that you need to define the geometry here you have the geometry but the material is not defined yet so here you can just select the material that you please and then close this part but before that we can check that here we have nonlinear effects yes so it means that as far as our materials are nonlinear and we want to have the um, yielding of the t-stop in the position of the bolt or in the position of the flange connected to the web so it should be yes the next is the connections here we can see that by default you have the contact region which in this case is the bottom of the t-stop flange and the top face of the supporting plate in that case by default it is written that it is bonded uh, typically here we have this generate automatic connection on refresh to be yes uh, if you are assigning the contact by yourself it is better to be no because whenever you modify the uh, geometry and come back to refresh here in the APDL mechanical page it will be updated and if uh, you have plenty of connections that you release or you didn't want to be considered as the contact region then it might affect your results so here in this contact region they are not bonded as we know they should be able to be separated it means that if we have a tension in the web it can lift the t-stop up if it is unbonded then it cannot lift the t-stop so here we have several options uh, frictional is the most accurate one considering that we have 20 percent frictional coefficient between steel and steel typically in these type of tasks uh, we assume that the entire shear force will be taken by the bolts for this reason it is better if we use frictionless it means that it can be lifted and it can slide so the slide uh, will be prevented by the bolts that I'm going to model right now and if it is under tension then the flange can be separated from the supporting plate the next is uh, defining the bolts so there are many options here as you can see we have joints a spring and beams joints are uh, good if you are not interested to analyzing the bolts and also you are checking uh, just how the loads are transferred but the problem is that they mean that they are very stiff there are options that you can define the stiffness of the joint uh, which is not fitted in this video a spring uh, we will come back to this a spring modeling in the joint calculation when we are going to have the rigid example from your code uh, bearing it's not relevant to here for now and the beam uh, perhaps it's a very good option for this example i'm going to use beam first of all material if you do not delete the default material it will be taken as a structural steel this m88 is the material of the bolt 
and the scope here is the mobile part which can be as soon as mobile and here we have the scope so now we have the um, bolt the only thing is the radius coming back to our calculation it was m20 and the shear area was 245 square millimeter if you calculate the diameter it is 17.66 and if you divide it by 28.83 is the radius here you can see that it looks uh, pretty fine for this model and the beam length is 37 millimeter 12 millimeter for the flange and 25 millimeter for the supporting plates so in total 37 millimeter we need to have the same for the other part we can go here and have another beam material m8 mobile part reference and then 8.83 then we need to have the mesh for mesh here you have different options the meshing is not the scope of this video base meshing would be the good option for these parts which are going to be connected to the bolt and t-stop and then uh, you can select the element size so the element size here we have 180 millimeter perhaps 10 to 20 millimeter would be good but if you want to have more accurate results you can go with the let's go with five millimeter and check the not bad however i would prefer to go with two millimeter the size of the mesh depends on the accuracy that you want and the place that you are going to check um, here you can see that now we have a fine mesh looks pretty good uh typically it is important to check the contact tool so it means that if you have something especially in the next video we will go through the uh, shell modeling here it is good if we are getting familiar with this option if you analyze the contact tool that here we have only one contact tool you can see that the contact is in the penetration of zero it means that it doesn't have any penetration yet it is completely in the and there is also no gap we can see that the gap is zero millimeter the reason is that here we have the solid element and we selected the uh, solid elements in a way that they are there is no gap between those two uh, this option is very important for the shell modeling we will come to this in the next video then we need to have a fixed support i assume that this plate is supported in a fixed manner then we have the load so here we can have a force on the top and then we can change the components let's have a look on our matcat calculation to check what the load was 123 kilonewton something like that for 245 square millimeter here we have 123 kilonewton and here you can see that how to calculate the equivalent radius of the bolt
123,000 and then we can start to analyze our model to solve it just hit solve and then we need to wait those who are familiar with the uh, convergence here you can come the solution output shows to be solver output you can change it to force convergence if you had a, a linear material then the load is taken as zero and one let's come back to the force to check how it looks like in the meanwhile so zero means the initial state and one representing one second it is not a transient calculation it's just presenting how the load is applied the initial case it is zero and then at one second it's getting to be 123 kilonewton if we had a linear analysis for this example, typically it is solved with the initial state and directly jumping to the last point or applying the load because it is linear. But whenever it is non-linear uh, model, then it needs to calculate it gradually because at any time of the loading, the behavior might change. It is possible that the load is quite insignificant and it, there is no plastic or uh, yielding of the material but the software by default starts to do it as a, a small uh, interval the analysis setting here is the program control at the moment auto time stepping but uh, in the future if i have time we can go through this option not not the whole but some of them to check how it works if you come back to here uh, it's still yes here we have the first iterations you can see that only 0 0.20 percent of the load is applied about 24 25 kilonewton for now and now it's starting to solve the mathematical model until it converts so here this is force convergence in this color and the other one is force criterion when it uh, finds its solution for the first iteration or 20 percent of the load then it starts to go to the next interval for example another 0 0.2 seconds or 20 percent more of the load if the results um, or error is a little bit significant then it starts to go with lower interval for example 10 percent of the load but if it cannot converge to the desired solution then it goes to half of for example 0 0.2 and starts to apply the load 10 percent so that's how it works uh, we just need to wait until the solution is achieved and then we can have a look on the results now here we can see that the force convergence line crossed force criterion we should have the first convergence after 15 or 16 iterations so as far as it has been converged here you will see the first line of convergence as the green dash line here and then it starts to go Further. so from 0 0.2 it goes to a higher value here we can see that if we have the first convergence and then it starts to go with 0 0.4 seconds or 40 percent of the load is going to be applied 20 percent more than the initial load that has been applied again it starts to find the solution for this 0 0.4 or 40 percent of the load and so on we need just to wait until the software solves the 100% of the load to be applied. Now we can see that the first uh, start point was 0 0.2, then 0 0.4, and then according to the solution, it could come to 0 0.7. And now it's uh, analyzing 
one or hundred percent of the load so uh, if your load is going to change the contact significantly and the solution is not under the error threshold then it starts to come back for example if you apply the load 150 kilonewton in this example then it starts to say that okay the results are not converged in the last phase so here we have the solutions uh, it's done we can add the deformation stress S strain we are looking for plastic S strain the important part is contact tool and also these two bolts just drag them to the solution and then evaluate all results Here we can see that uh, 0 0.72 millimeter is the deformation. You have this true scale. It is just one. If you look at it from the side, you can see that slightly the center of the T stop is lifted up. Here you can change it to 10 times bigger, for example, to see how it looks like. And then here in the graph, you can uh, have the motion here you can see that the deformation starts almost between the bolts not from the ends as we expected it was in the mode one in the equivalent stress uh, 235 megapascal is the yielding point here you can change the appearance to just three colors the first one you can select something to show it uh, better and also here i can select 235 and here 220 so here we can see the places that uh, the t-stop started to yield as we expected here it is yield and also besides the bolt started to yield as we also expected the same result here you can see how it looks like a better explanation is about the plastic strain here again we can change the color to zero point zero zero one and this is zero point zero fifteen so here we can see the places that started to have the plastic strain between zero point one percent to one point five percent and here you have the contact tool that you can see in what place you have a kind of a sliding here you can see that it is near and this is the sliding this part is going to be under prying force and it shows that this place is going to be in close contact and here we have the lifting part coming back to our matcat so if mode one is what we expect then the load in each bolt should be 92 kilonewton so let's check here in the first bolt it is 94 kilonewton pretty close to what we calculated by hand and also the other one should be the same as far as it's completely symmetrical 94 kilometer it depends on the accuracy that uh, you want in this example we didn't want to analyze the bolt because in Eurocode the uh, given regulation is not about the um, preloaded or non preloaded bolts it is completely a general uh, explanation that was the 
end of this video we went through the t-stop modeling uh, and failure mode one uh, we checked the results also with hand calculation that we did in the previous video in the next video we will model the same t-stop with ANSYS but this time with shell model and we will compare the results and we go through how the shell elements should be modeled thank you for watching see you next time bye